Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and let's leave no food coloring behind. This weekend I had a wonderful yarn tying play date with Lucas, Ryder, and two other neighborhood kids where they all created some really, really beautiful hand painted yarn using Wilton Colorite food coloring system and Wilton Sprinkles. But we do have some food coloring left over in a purple, well this was a yellow but I think it there was some crossover to make it green, blue, and orange. And so let's use up this dye today. In this pot I am heating up eight cups of water and I am gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar to use as our acid source. I am pre-soaking our yarn in some plain tap water and I added on a brand new reusable nylon zip tie so that way I have an extra tie and you can easily pick this up out of the dye bath. The yarn we are using today is Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% superwash merino wool. What is my plan for this yarn? I'm not really sure. I think that I just want to sort of take a color, swirl it up. Each of these only had a couple drops of food coloring. Put it in our container. And now I'm just squeezing out some of that pre-soak from our yarn. And we're just going to dip. Oh yeah, that's not very much pigment in there at all. It'll be almost grayish versus purple. We're giving it, oh that's a nice little tinge of color. And then we're going to shift it around, add some more color, and sort of continue on. Oh, that's pretty. And now we've got most of that color absorbed. So I'm going to take my nylon zip tie, which is now currently in the middle, and I'm going to shift it. Being careful not to hold on to the yarn because I don't want to get hurt. Now let's take this green, and we're going to do the same kind of thing. It's kind of a yellow, kind of a green. And then when we see what all the colors look like, then I might decide to over dye this a little bit with something. But we'll see like what kind of hues we end up with. And you can see that our green is more pigmented than our purple was. I imagine the orange might be fairly pigmented as well. But again, I'm taking the zip tie. Now it's hot, I'm shifting our yarn around. This time we're going to add our orangish. I think there's some like brown in there almost as well. I'm slowly adding this. Since this yarn is super washed, things will strike a little faster than if it were none. Um, this is a technique I've done a lot, but I haven't done it in a little while and oof, I actually kind of like we're getting something sort of fall and earthy um, because that orange is sort of covering up those other colors giving us like almost a gray feel there I wonder what the blue will do for us but we're gonna uh, okay I'm going to use my tongs there we go to help move the yarn again. And so we're going to have, here we go, shift it so that way one of the oop, last sections there for our blue. And blue typically absorbs a bit slower than some other colors, um, at least in terms of food coloring. But we're going to see how bright it is, but actually I might sort of keep going and cover the whole thing with this blue and see sort of what happens with those orange colors. Ooh, I actually really, really like what the blue is doing to these colors. Yes, it's turning some things a little muddier, but I'm not mad at it. I think that it is interesting. Um, I, I'm not even sure what color I would have grabbed I think to turn it turn everything over but 
This is actually ending up really, really fun. And you can see a lot of the color has absorbed, but I'm sort of just going by feel, and what we're creating today is more repeating than what we would have gotten if I were to have poured things in the pot. But I wanted to mix up our Leave No Dye Behind and sort of feel how these colors were striking the yarn, because ultimately, you can always go grab some black or some navy and over dye everything or glaze or something. Um, but I like this sort of burnt copper color with this blue. The purple is pretty much gone, um, but yeah, it's fun just sort of playing and seeing what happens and I think this color is beautiful. The heat is still on low and I am going to let this sort of sit here a little below a simmer for 10 minutes. It's been a little more than 10 minutes. I'm not gonna say how much more than 10 minutes, but it's been a little more than 10 minutes. Uh, that happens, but our water is definitely clear. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in the dye pot um, just for ease and let it cool completely, and then we will go ahead and wash it. Um, I did a good job with the temperature today because we definitely stayed like in that perfect sweet spot below a boil. Um, but you know the color had basically absorbed already. Anyway, we'll be back once things are cool. Let's wash our yarn. I'm just adding some cool tap water and a tiny bit of some clear dish soap. Um, really, any dish soap would be fine. I like to use clear for demonstration purposes. That way all of you can tell if there's any bleeding. And there isn't. Um, so I will be washing this soap out, putting the yarn to a nice thin wire, and then hanging it up to dry. I was feeling a little unsure about this colorway, to be honest, until I laid it out on this mat and thought, this reminds me of a bird. And then all of a sudden, thinking of these colors and the feathers of a very tropical parrot or other kind of bird, it really made sense. Something about it works, just in a way that I wouldn't necessarily have gone out and picked. It was a lot of fun playing with a dip dyeing multiple times kind of technique to use up this leftover food coloring. And you can see just how pigmented this yarn really is. I love dyeing yarn with food coloring. It is so easy to find, whether you're looking at the supermarket or at a big box craft store. Uh, you can find food coloring in so many different places. And for me, at least when I got started, it was much more accessible than commercial acid dyes. And honestly, I was a lot less intimidated by playing around with food coloring because I might play around with food coloring when making a cake. And so it felt more natural to me at first. It is, however, important to keep in mind a few things. Food coloring it has been approved for consumption and different food coloring molecules are approved in different countries. But while the food coloring has been approved for consumption, it wasn't developed with permanently dying fibers in mind. It happens to do a wonderful job like that, but the molecules used in commercial acid dyes, while they're not approved for food at all, have been selected and chosen based on their pigmentation and longevity in terms of dyeing fibers and fabric. And so you will get better color fastness and light fastness with that. I have food coloring item, dyed items that have lasted months and years, some close to a decade, with still super vibrant colors that get a lot of use. But you can see some fading if you leave things in direct sunlight. I go into all of this with some more details on my Frequently Asked Questions playlist. Um, which you can find a link to in the video description. I'm sharing all of this not to convince you not to use food coloring. I think you should use food coloring. That's how my journey started. But, you know, keep in mind and do a little bit of research on the materials before you get started so that way you can invest in the supplies that will work best for the fibers you want to dye. And feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to give advice if I can. There's many things I have yet to try myself, but I love being able to explore different dyes and techniques, etc. 
So for this long-winded <laughs> conclusion from a really quick dying project, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, turn on notifications by smashing that bell icon so that way you always will be notified when I release a new video or start a live stream. Go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon or Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Links are all in the description, and there's many great ways that you can help support the channel beyond just watching and enjoying the content. Uh, thank you so much for watching, everyone. And I can't wait for you to see the next video.